All right, so today's um, material is talking about the method of null lines. Okay, so the basic idea, if we recall, if we have uh, dx over dt equals f of xy, now we're just going to be working with autonomous differential equations here. Uh, then a null line uh, is a curve. Maybe I should just write this a null line is a curve for which either uh, dx over dt equals zero or dy over dt equals zero. So notice that that also says another way to look at that. It's a curve where f of x equals, or f of x y equals zero, or g of x y equals zero. By the way, as I'm writing this, you may already jump to the idea that where these two curves intersect are going to be wet. Yes, intersection of the two sets of curves. Now I should say, well, we'll, we'll see how that works. Uh, gives equilibria. Okay, and so um, you might also notice if, if one of these is equal to zero but the other one's not, then that means you're traveling either straight up and down or straight side to side. Okay, and so we're going to use that information so I think we can just jump right to an example. Uh, let's take a look at x prime equals um, 2x minus x squared minus um, xy. And y prime is equal to uh, 3y minus y squared uh, minus 2xy. Okay, so before I look for equilibrium solutions, I'm just going to go ahead and see where the two curves are equal to zero. So in the top curve, this is my f of x, y. If I set that equal to zero, I can see right away that I can factor an x out. Right. Similarly, for the second um, function, the g of x, y, it looks like I can factor a common y term out of that immediately. Good. So now I have four curves that uh, I want to look at. x equals 0, y equals 2 minus x, y equals 0, and y equals, let's see, three minus two x it looks like, huh? Now remember when um, one of the top curves is equal to zero and one of the bottom curves is equal to zero, then you have an equilibrium solution, right? So again, let me say that if you have one of the top curves equal to zero and one of the bottom curves equal to zero, then you have an equilibrium solution. But what happens if you have the two bottom curves equal to zero? Then that's not an equilibrium solution, right? Because x prime may not be zero, okay? So uh, one of the top curves has to intersect with one of the bottom curves in order to get an equilibrium. Good, and so we can locate the equilibria that way too, graphically, right? And so let's go ahead and try it. So now I'm going to draw my four curves. And so let's see, x equals zero is the y-axis. Uh, y equals zero is the x-axis, and of course right away we get the origin as the equilibrium for those two. Let me draw this up a little bit more. Okay, so now uh, let's draw some more lines in here. How about uh, y equals two minus x? Let's see if I can draw that in there decently. Uh, 
I'm going to, I'm not going to draw this to scale because I want to emphasize a few points. So this is y equals 2 minus x. And then I've got 3 minus 2x. So that's also going to intersect up here with a negative slope. So let's see if I can, okay, that, that'll probably do good there for, so I'm not drawing it to scale so we can emphasize the differences of these two. Good. Now, where are the other equilibria now? <clears throat> well, uh, one of the equilibria is between the intersection between uh, this line and this line, so that would be here. And then any others? Well, how about uh, x equals 0 and this line? That would be here. And then any others? Uh, how about the intersection between those two curves? Where would that be? Yes, that would be down here. Okay, so notice that this is not an equilibrium, right? Good. That's because um, x equals 0 and uh, y equals 2, that's the intersection of these two curves, right? So that's not an equilibrium. Good. Uh, similarly, right, uh, with the intersection of these two curves is not an equilibrium, right? And that point is there. Okay, so um, what else can we do with these graphs? Well, like we were saying, along the line x equals 0, we know that x prime is equal to 0. And so can we figure out what y is doing? Well, y prime in that case would be uh, y times 3 minus y. So can we do a little um, sign chart analysis for y times 3 minus y? Uh, let's see, the zeros are at, do you remember doing these in calculus? 0 and 3. Uh, y is negative here and negative, oop, positive there, positive there. Actually, you could just look at the parabola too. Uh, negative, let's see, 3 minus y. If y is a negative number, 3 minus a minus would be a plus, right? And then between 0 and 3, that'd be like a A 1, for example, 3 minus 1 is positive, and then this would be negative there. Good. And so then all together we have negative, positive, negative. Oops. And so let's translate this information over to the graph. So where are we in the graph? We're along the line x uh, prime equals 0. Oop, actually, uh, we're along the line x equals 0, right? I should have put that in there. Because in the second equation, right, I set that I set y equal to zero, or sorry, x equal to zero. <clears throat> so we are currently along this line right here. Okay, and we're saying that if y is less than zero, we have a negative number there, and so therefore, which direction are we traveling? Straight down. Good. And then between zero and three, we're going straight up. Good. And then above 3, we're going straight down, so uh, the arrows would be going straight down. Good. All right. So we do a similar analysis along the other curves. So for example, how about if uh, the other one for x, e x prime equals 0? Oh, I did have the x equals there. <laughs> wasn't even paying attention. Uh, x equals, or y equals 2 minus x. Then again, we know x prime is equal to 0. What's y equal to, or y prime? Uh, let's see. Well, we could keep it y. That'd be y times 3 minus y minus 2 times uh, x is 2 minus y now. Okay, so let's see if that simplifies. 3 minus y. Now that's 3 minus 4, which would be minus 1. And then minus y plus 2y would be a plus y. 
good. And so what would that look like if we do a little sign chart here? Well, actually, let's do a parabola instead. Uh, the parabola goes through 0 and 1. I'm plotting this curve. And um, let's see, it goes up, right? It opens up. So therefore, it's negative, positive, negative. Good. And so let's translate that information over to the graph. Get rid of this line here. So our next green line is going to be uh, y equals 2 minus x, which is this one. And now where are the y values that we're looking for? Uh, here's y equals 0, and here's y equals 1, right at the point of intersection there. Okay, and so those are the only two points we have to consider. So now, uh, if y is less than 0, so if we're down here, which direction are we traveling? Well, y prime is negative, meaning we are going straight down. Where's my arrow? There it is. So I'm going to be going straight down here. And so I'm going to flip up. I'm going to go positive, and then I'll go negative. Good. So I can get rid of my green. Whoops. Uh oh. Pause. Okay. So now you can kind of see what's what the routine here is. Uh, now I want to do the same thing um, for the next two curves. And so um, I guess we didn't quite make it through this example in this video, so we'll continue in the next video.